Theater presents Bob Hope. The Mutual Broadcasting System, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Citizen's Arrest. And now, here is your host, Bob Hope. Family theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives. If we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world, family theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, Citizen's Arrest. Yes? Al Martin's out here, Inspector. How about the Madisons? Are they there? Yes, sir, both of them. Okay, bring Merton in here. There he is, Inspector. Hi, Inspector. Hello, Alphonse. So you finally made it back, did you? Uh, Nixon and Alphonse stuff, huh? Over here, Alphonse. What's the matter with you? Don't you like it on the outside? Please, Inspector, you talk like I got caught on purpose. Uh, didn't you? No, of course not. Uh, Quinn? He tried to hold up a market. Owner pulled a gun out of the cash drawer and slapped him with a citizen's arrest. Mm-hmm. What's that on your coat, Al? Is that blood? No, it ain't blood. It's ketchup, Inspector. Any shooting? Lots. Eric Madison, the market owner, claims he fired twice over Merton's head. That was all. Oh, that's not the way it happened at all, Sergeant. You gotta learn to get the facts straight if you want to get ahead in this business. Sit down, Al. Inspector, uh, can we take these things off? I won't try nothing. Oh, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Take off his handcuffs, Quinn. Okay. Thanks, Inspector. So you think we don't know how to get our facts straight? No, I didn't say that. You just never talked to the right people, that's all. You know, Quinn, I'll bet you a cup of coffee we'll get three different stories on how this happened. No bet. All right, then. I'll bet you Merton here will do everything he can to get up to the pen before the start of the baseball season. Gee, baseball season. <laughs> Inspector, would you please stop talking like I wanted to get caught? You want me to take this down, Inspector? Yes, Quinn, we might as well get this now. Save time later. All right, Al. According to the blotter, you were apprehended this morning at 8.15 o'clock. See, Inspector, while... that's what I mean. Now you're going to read me the blotter. You don't even want to know how it happened. All right. Suppose you tell us, Al. Uh, tell us in your own words. Yeah? In your own words. Well, yeah, okay, that's a good deal. <clears throat> Let's see now. Uh, well, early this morning, I was sitting in my suite of rooms at the hotel. What hotel? Huh? What hotel? The home away from home hotel. He had a hall room with a Murphy bed and a hot plate. Look who's telling the story anyhow. I'll tell it, I'll tell it. You just write it down, huh? Okay, okay. Go on with your story, Al. <clears throat> well... I was short of cash and thinking of going out to the track. So right away, I think of this here market on the corner. Mm-hmm. Now, I kind of looked the place over one day just in case of such an emergency. Yeah, yeah. Now, I goes downstairs and I hops into my touring car. I got a big black job with all the extras. One way of telling the difference between a cheap hood and a real operator like me is that the bums are in a hurry. Me? I was taking my time. I cruises around the block twice to make sure the beat cop ain't around. Then I noses my sedan into the curb just a little ahead of the market entrance. Then I gets out, and I strolls around to the back of the car. And there I start fiddling with the plates. Whilst out of the corner of my eye, I'm casing the market to see if anybody's in there. You know, customers. Well, there was only the guy and his wife. I moves inside and I angles for the check stand. Uh, hey, uh, uh, give me a package of butts, will you? Take it easy, buddy. Can't you see I'm busy? What's the matter with you? Now, how am I to know that this guy is a lion? He gives me a look where to give Dillinger to Willie's. Well, I'm standing there with my rod bulging out of my pocket, and he goes right on adding up a column of figures. 
And his dog, eesh, she was as bad as he was. I tell you, they was boat lions. Hey, Phoebe! Yeah? Come on, get on the ball. Take care of this goof. Can't you see I'm too busy? So am I busy. Do it yourself. Do it yourself? Is that any way to talk to your husband? You're looking for clout, are you? From who? From you? You raise your hand to me and I'll let you have it with this bottle of ketchup. Put down the bottle or I'll club you with this can of tuna. You wouldn't dare. And it's solid pack, not flakes. Put down a ketchup, Phoebe. Mm. All right. Well, that's better. Now take care of this guy. Well, what do you want, stupid? Look, you want to wait somewhere, buddy? Go to the bus station. This is a market. Uh, 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 ah, call me back when he's made up his mind. All right, that's enough. Now you put him up. This is a stick-up. Put up your hands. A stick-up? Ah, get this clown, Eric. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is trying... <laughs> 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 trying to heist the jerd. <laughs> <laughs> now, Inspector, you can see how a thing like that might tend to unsettle a man a little bit. Uh, things were going not so pretty good, and, you know, I have my reputation to think about. So I hunches up my shoulders, and I takes the rod out of my pocket so they can get a good look at it. Now, I ain't kidding. This ain't no pea shooter, you know. Pea shooter? Did you get that, Phoebe? <laughs> yeah, pea shooter. <laughs> oh, that's all right. Hey, what is this, a gag? Is this guy a friend of yours? Is no, that? I never saw him before. <laughs> uh, you stop it. Now, that's enough. You stop it or I'll shoot. Now, turn over your cash. I want your dough and I want it now. You want your dough and I want it now. <laughs> <laughs> and look, you wait, Eric. <laughs> Next, you'll say, give me, give me your money or your life. Yeah, yeah. what a cornball. <laughs> I tell you, mister, honestly, you're a scream. <laughs> Eric, honey, look, if you don't know this punk, why don't you take your rod out of the cash drawer and cut him down, huh? <laughs> What's the matter with you people? What kind of a market is this? Well, go ahead, Eric. Get your gun out and blast him. <laughs> no, I'll just do it with this. Now, you stand back. Don't you come no closer. <laughs> you missed. Knock him over this way, honey, again, so I can hit him again. Now, the last thing I see is this ketchup bottle coming down to me, and then nothing. When I come to, they got me propped up against the cash register. I say give them the cement treatment. Then we'll take them out in the delivery truck and dump them in the river. God knows some man. Oh, we could wrap them in paper from the meat department, weigh them down with a couple of cases of soda pop. Nah, why waste food? Yeah. Well, we could use 20 or 30 pounds of those cold cuts. I don't think they're moving too well anyhow. Hey, look, he's coming around. Boy, you, you, you people are nuts. You're crazy. Ask him what we ought to do with him, honey. Yeah. Hey, tough guy, what do you think we ought to do with you? Well, come on, tough guy, you got no ideas, huh? Uh, uh, police, uh, call the police, please, please call the police. You know, Phoebe, I hate to admit this, but he's right. Yeah, I guess that would be the best way. If we knock him off, we'll have to close the market for the morning. We can't afford to lose the sales. <laughs> yeah, you know, you're right about that. Yeah, go ahead, honey, call the cops. <laughs> I swear, Inspector, that is exactly the way it happened. Yeah, sure, Al. Now, you know I'm a very tough citizen. Just down on my luck is all. I just happened to pick the wrong place. Now, how was I to know that this guy was a lion and that, that, ooh, that mall of his, wow. What were you batting on the prison team when you got out, 300? 380. But believe me, Inspector, I ain't trying to get back into the pen. And I wish you'd stop talking like I was. That kind of talk could ruin a man. Uh, things a little rough on the outside, Al? Well, crime ain't what it used to be, but... But well, it's safer on the inside, huh, Al? Yeah, but don't go saying that... That's where all your friends are. Look, what I told you, it's the truth, so help me. Sure, Al, sure. I'm a very tough hombre. Yeah, yeah. very tough. That's all, Al. Oh, look, look, Inspector. Well? Could I ask you something? Go right ahead. Now, I know you don't believe me, but, well... Long as I confess, you want me to uh, try to keep it quiet, Al. Is that yeah, it? you know, as long as I'm going up, I mean, uh, a thing like this could ruin me. Sure, I'll see what I can do, Al. Take him out, Sergeant Quinn, and uh, bring in Eric Madison. Yes. Sir. Oh, Inspector, ain't you forgetting something? Oh, 
Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, put the cuffs on him, Quinn. <laughs> this is a very dangerous character. Now, your name is Eric Madison? Yes, yes, sir. That's correct. I'm Eric Madison. You made a citizen's arrest of an armed robber this morning at 8.15 o'clock. That's right, Inspector. Any right-thinking citizen would have done the same thing. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't mind, Mr. Madison, just tell us what happened this morning in your own words. My own words? That's right, Mr. Madison. All right, Inspector. I remember it all exactly. Mrs. Madison and I were in the market this morning at about 7. That's uh, the time we usually open. Yes. We worked on the books and restocking the shelves till about the time the robber came in. Oh, dear! Yes, love? On that order for the Melbersons yesterday, was that a number one can of asparagus or a number two can? It was a number one can, love. Thank you, my dear. Oh, good morning, sir. Morning. How may I help you this morning? How may I be of service, hmm? Uh, get your wife over here. Pardon me, sir? It, it sounded as if you said, uh, get your wife over here. That's what I said. This is a stick-up. A stick-up? Better call her over, bud. Honey! Honey, better come over here for a minute. Coming, dear. What is it, darling? It's a stick-up, lady. <gasps> Just keep oh. calm, my dear. Oh, Eric. Just take it easy and nobody will get hurt. Eric, I'm frightened. Stand behind me, dear. I'll protect you. Okay, buddy. Hand over all your cash. Oh, Eric, he's going to take all our hard-earned money. No, he's not, dear. Oh, yes, I am. Not a penny. Now, listen, buddy. This lump in my pocket ain't a bunch of grapes, you know. Oh, I've seen your kind before. Think you can bully whom you please, eh? You've never turned a hand to earn an honest day's wages, or I miss my guess. Well, you can't bully me. I'll not stand for it. It's time you learned that crime does not pay. My trigger finger's getting awful itchy. Well, scratch it, then. Scratch it? If you really needed the money, if you'd come to me as an honest man in trouble, I'd have given you the money. Well, if it'll make you feel any better, you can think of me as a Reuben trouble. Just give me the dough. Not now, you hooligan. It's the principle of the thing now. I shan't give you a cent. Not one cent. But this is a stick-up. Ha! Look, uh, just put up your hands, will you? I'll get it myself. Oh, Eric, please. Let's not take any chances. Oh, let's put up our hands, Eric, please. Just... Just this once. Not on your life. Now, buddy, I'm warning you. Hey, what's a smile for? On second thought, my dear, we will put up our hands. Oh, thank you, Eric. Thank you. <laughs> the money's in the register. Just open the drawer. Well, how I get this thing open? Just push the no-sail button. Like this? Ah! I tricked you! Yeah, no, you don't! Oh, Eric, be careful! Ah! No, the jig is up. Just stand where you are. D -d -don't, don't shoot. Didn't think I'd have a revolver hidden away in the cash drawer, did you, my fine friend? Now, give me a gun. Hand it over. Okay. Here it is. Well, I dropped it. I'll, I'll pick it up for you. No, you don't. I'll get it. I... Look out, Eric. He's, he has a bottle of ketchup. Oh, yes! Oh, I'm shot. I'm shot. No, you're not. I just had to shoot the bottle out of your hand. My hero. I can't understand why I missed it with the first bullet. Better call the police, my dear. Call the police. Well, that's what happened. And as you know, Inspector, the officer arrived and brought us all down here. Now, uh... If that's all you want, I really should be getting back. That's not quite all, Mr. Madison. Well, I don't see why not. After all, I've done my duty as any right-thinking citizen should. Right-thinking citizen? Non-thinking citizen would sound better. Mr. Madison, are you insured against theft? Why, yes, you I... You risk your own life and the life of your wife to protect a few dollars for an insurance company that expects to pay on a certain number of policies anyway. It's your good fortune. I'm not investigating a double homicide right now. So let's not talk any more about right-thinking citizens till one of us learns what it means, all right? Well, 
All right, Inspector. Well, Sergeant Quinn, what do you think of version number two? Mm, sounds a little closer to the truth, Inspector. You can show Mr. Madison to the waiting room now and bring in Mrs. Madison. Mrs. Madison? We've heard two versions of the story, sir. We just want to hear her tell it. Why, well, I, I, I don't understand. Just for the record, Mr. Madison, routine, oh, you know. Oh, yeah. uh -huh, of yeah. course. This way, Mr. Madison. <laughs> Mrs. Madison, will you tell us what happened this morning? Oh, but my husband already told... It's just routine, Mrs. Madison. We have to have it. Uh, that's right. Well... Uh, just tell us what happened as nearly as you could remember. Well, now, I may have forgotten a few things, you understand. It, it was quite a shock. Uh, we understand. Well, at about eight this morning, or maybe a quarter past... Uh, honey! Yes, dear? I don't think this thing that's, uh, adding machine is working right. Oh? It keeps saying $1.11 and 26 cents is $1.37. $1.11 and 26 cents is $1.37. Well, I'll try $1.37, dear. Oh. Well, then maybe that's why it keeps saying that. Honey! On this bottle of ketchup, what's it say? I can't make out the price you put on it. Just a moment. I'll be right there. Oh, maybe you'd better take care of the customer first, Eric. Huh? Oh. <laughs> uh, good morning, sir. I didn't see you come in. Put down a bottle, mister. Pardon me? It says put down a bottle so you can put your hands up in the air. This is a stick-up. A stick-up? Watch it. Oh, Eric, you dropped the cats. All right, now stand back, you two, girly. She, 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 stand back, dear. The man's got a gun. Oh, it really is a hold-up, isn't it? Ooh, I'll have to do something. Just open a till, that's all. Now, give me all your money. Anything, anything. Just don't shoot. No, don't. You'll be frightened, Eric. He's not going to shoot. Yeah, what makes you think I'm not? What? A big, handsome guy like you wouldn't shoot a poor, defenseless girl like me now, would you? Hmm? Come on, now. Would you? B uh, well, but the guy here, he's your husband, oh, Please, he? don't wave the gun around like that. What makes you think I wouldn't shoot him? I'm a pretty tough customer, you know. Shoot him? Well, why bother? Huh? Just raise your voice and he'll tremble. Go ahead, try it. Well, go on. Oh, boy, this is screwy. Try it. Okay. Now, see here, you... <laughs> See what I mean? Hey, you're right. Bet if you said, uh, boo, he'd faint. You think so? Oh, it's worth a try. I think I will. Uh, hey, you. Me? Yeah, you. Boo! Ah! Oh, you see? He fainted. <laughs> yeah. You know, I didn't know I had it in me. Ah, uh, you just don't know your own strength, big boy. Oh, uh, tell me something. Why, uh... Why did a good-looking don like you fall for a guy like that? Oh, I don't know. I guess I thought he was strong like you. And I guess I was in a hurry. You know how a girl gets to thinking the right man will never come along. And then when he does, well, what does a poor girl do? Huh? Oh, you're so strong and so masterful. <laughs> you, you just take what you want. But life, well, life isn't so easy for a girl, you know. You big, strong men just can't imagine the, well, the toil and the strife and the hardship. The tears, endless waiting for, well, for the right man. Yeah, that's terrible. It makes some women hard. But I wouldn't let that happen to me. Because I, I knew someday you'd come. Yeah, but how did you know it was me? Well, a girl just knows these things. I felt it from the moment you came into the store. You saw how I looked at you. Yeah. Hey, uh, I'm sorry, uh, you know, about the gun. I hope I didn't frighten you. Oh, what was a gun compared to the look in your eyes? 
From the moment I saw you standing there, it was bigger than both of us. Baby, you and me, we could make beautiful music together. Let's grab the door to the cash register and lamb it for Mexico. Anything you say, handsome. I'll get the money. Hey, uh, can you get over Eric all right? I can get no, it for no, you. No, no, it's all right. See? Now all I do is push the button, reach in the compartment, and grab this gun. You... You... You shot the gun out of my hand. Honey. Don't you honey me, you... You thief. But Mexico... Did you really think I fell for you? Well, what kind of a woman do you think I am? This is a man I love. Oh, Eric, honey, can you ever forgive me? It was the only way. I had to fool you, too, to save us both. Oh, Eric. Eric, there was no other way. You, you mean you really love that? When you could have had me? Oh, he may be a weakling, a simpering, yellow-livered coward, afraid of his own shadow, but at least he's honest, if nothing, absolutely nothing else. And I love him. Eric. Eric, honey. Eric, wake up. You've got to call the police, Eric. <laughs> And that's just the way it happened, Mrs. Madison? Well, I may have forgotten something, but that's just about how it happened, Inspector. You're a very brave woman, Mrs. Madison. Oh, well, thank you, Sergeant. And now, if you don't mind, my husband and I, will, we really should be getting back. Oh, of course, of course. Uh, Sergeant Quinn, will you have those statements typed? Won't take long, Mrs. Madison. Save your trip later. Later? Yes, if you'll just wait for about five minutes and sign the prepared statements, then you won't have to come back and sign them later. But I... It... Oh, all right. This way, Miss Madison. Won't take long, ma'am. You'll probably be back in the store within an hour. Well, Inspector, I guess I owe you a cup of coffee. <laughs> I guess you do, all right. Three people at the scene of the crime, three different stories. Yeah. Which one you suppose is a true story? One of them's got to be right. We may never know. Uh, too bad you haven't got that waiting room of yours bugged. Sergeant Quinn. Oh, well, 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 I mean, I mean, that is, I, <laughs> I know it wouldn't be right, but... No, uh, no buts about but, it. Oh, I, I just been out of curiosity. The very uh, idea that we might listen in on a private conversation between two such civic-minded citizens should be a ball into a good police officer. Uh, yes, sir. That yes, kind sir. of uh, eavesdropping went out with rubber hoses in the third degree. Uh, I know, I'm sorry, sir. All I, right, uh, all right. Now, now, you better give those statements to the typist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, yes, sir. Yeah. And you might as well take Merton downstairs and book him for the crime. Oh, okay, Chief. <laughs> Too bad we haven't got the room bugged. And I had such wonderful high hopes for that boy. Mm. Would be interesting, though. Mm. I suppose if a man found himself in earshot, it wouldn't be eavesdropping. See if there was a chair right here by the door. And the fella just stepped stand up on it so that his head was next to the transom. And the transom would open just a little bit. A few minutes, a few minutes. We should be over the state line by now. State line? What did you tell him a story like that? For? I didn't know I was going to be telling any story at all. I thought I did real well for the spur of the moment. You thought. Don't make me laugh. Hey, listen, you. It was your idea to blow the whistle on that bum. Ho, ho, ho. Big man. Wouldn't that make a funny joke? Listen, if they'd have looked in that storeroom and found the guy that really owned the market, the way we tied him up... Look, you... we knock over a market and a guy tries to knock us over while we're doing it. I tell you, it was the only way. Yeah. Well, if I had my way, that bum would be wrapped up with some cold cuts and at the bottom of the river right now. Jumping Jupiter. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Uh, this is Lafferty. Uh, send a uniformed officer into my waiting room and tell him to arrest the two people in there for armed robbery. Uh, uh, that's right, yes, my waiting room. Uh, then send a car to the Pinedale Market. Tell the patrolman they'll find the proprietor tied up in the back room. Uh, uh, look, look, don't, don't, don't ask questions. Just do as I say. Uh, yes, that's all. No, 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 wait, wait just a minute. Catch Sergeant Quinn and tell him to release Merton, not to book him. Uh, that's all. Well, 
Sugar and cream in your coffee, Inspector? No black, thank you. Yeah, really got to hand it to you, Chief. <laughs> the way you figured out that case. <laughs> Clever investigation. <laughs> well, Sergeant, you're bound to learn a little something after 20 years on the force. <laughs> Funny thing. I thought Al Merton was going to cry when I let him go. <laughs> Wanted to know if maybe I couldn't stick him with uh, impersonating an officer. <laughs> I guess he's just lost on the outside. <laughs> you know, you know, I'll bet he figures out another way to cop a rat, get himself sent up. No, no, I don't think so. <laughs> I'll bet he does. All right, everybody, this is a stick-up. Better all stand still, because I'm a mighty tough customer. This ain't a bunch of grapes I got in my pocket, you know. Oh, hi, Inspector. All right, Al, you win. Let's go home. This is Bob Hope again. Remember a few minutes ago at the start of this program, we heard that family theater's only purpose was to urge everyone to pray, to pray together as families. And that figures. Besides the good it does for individual families and the individuals in the family, there's a big public factor involved. The factor of peace, of stability, of the chance of a little happiness, perhaps, for the whole wide world. That's the answer and the one that a lot of the big books don't give us. It isn't so very complicated. In fact, it's as simple as the heart of a child. Family theater believes, and I agree with them, that that is what we've lost. Simplicity, family unity, dependence on God. And that is why every week over this station, Family Theater tells us over and over, without ever getting tired of repeating it, that if we want to get back to God's plan, we've got to meet the plan halfway. That a nation is only as strong as its families. And that means the ones that don't break up. And that the family that prays together stays together. Let's all get in the act. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you transcribed Citizen's Arrest. Bob Hope was your host. Featured in our cast were Jack Crucian, Marvin Miller, G.G. Pearson, Pat McGeehan, and Herb Vigran. The script was written and directed for Family Theater by Robert Hugh O'Sullivan, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type program by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is George Crowell expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to be with us next week when family theater will present The Criminal, starring Lyle Betker. Gene Lockhart will be your host. Join us, won't you? America is still at war against death and disease, and the most important weapon is blood. Why not enlist your blood? Call your local Red Cross today for an appointment to help save a life. You'll be glad you did. Remember, call your local Red Cross for an appointment to help save a life. Family Theater will be presented again next week at this time. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. Mm -hmm.